we stand at a point in time in the history of Marshall University that's truly historic. 175 years since Marshall was founded as a higher an institution of higher learning. We are prepared as we go forward to venture into, I think, an exciting era of the university that is unprecedented. We are in stronger financial shape as a university than ever before. We did something this past year and we did a new bond issue and that was we received an upgrade in our bond rating from one of the rating services from Fitch. In this day and age right now, upgrades are as rare as hen's teeth. But it's, it's a reflection of just how we've been managing and leading this university and our commitment to improving the financial stability and sustainability of this university. We are looking at record freshman enrollment for the last two years, 2010-2011. We're looking at this fall of equaling last year's freshman enrollment. We're growing the overall enrollment of the university to record levels. And if you want to know what it takes to be a successful university, it's all about the students. It's all about their success. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. One of the areas that was very important for us to look at was new degree programs, high demand degree programs, that would offer our students opportunities well into the future. And uh, we have started a number of new majors at Marshall University and, and several new graduate programs. In June, we officially dedicated the opening of the new School of Physical Therapy. Dr. Penny Kroll is with us this, uh, this evening. She is the director of that program, and she is the founding director of that program, and has built the faculty and built the program. <laughs> Penny, wonderful job. The program will enroll 40 students a year, and uh, as I said at the time, we, did, we uh, opened the school officially. We are not starting a physical therapy program to be an average physical therapy program in this country. We want this program to be a signature program of excellence for us, and under Penny's leadership, I'm very confident that's going to happen, she and her faculty. Congratulations, Penny. The new School of Pharmacy. Uh, recently received uh, pre-candidate status and will enroll its first class in August. Uh, many of you know Mike Perry, uh, who has been a longtime friend and supporter of Marshall University, uh, former interim president. Mike told me when he called me after it was announced, he said, this rivals the establishment of the School of Medicine and 1961 when Marshall be became a university. He says that's significant what it means to not just Marshall University but southern West Virginia and our tri entire tri-state region. This is a huge success. Uh, our founding dean, Dr. Kevin Yingling, is with us this evening. Where's Kevin? There he is right there. Kevin, you've done a superb job. Congratulations. I, I'm very proud of what Kevin has done. The quality and caliber of the faculty he's recruited for this school is absolutely top notch. Uh, I had the occasion to be involved in the startup of the Chicago College of Pharmacy in the early 90s. And I can tell you the caliber of the faculty we have and the team he's put together is so far superior to anything I've seen for a new program as to stand alone. And I look for great success from this program. We had over 350 applications for 80 spots. The class is full, it's ready to go in August, and on August 14th, we will officially open the new School of Pharmacy at Marshall University. And I'm very, very excited about that possibility, or that, that event. Our School of Medicine continues to prosper. Uh, we have a new leader, uh, he's with us tonight, Dr. Joe Shapiro is right here with his wife, Mary. <laughs> Joe, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, during the uh, last legislative session, uh, to address some of our accreditation issues. Uh, Senator Plymel uh, on the Senate side, and we had uh, folks on the House side, uh, sponsored an increase in state funding for the School of Medicine, a $1.2 plus million dollar increase in base funding, which is essential for the continued growth and vitality of the School of Medicine. And Senator Plymel, thank you for your leadership in that regard. It was very, very important. <laughs> to give you an indication of the performance of our medical school, 100% placement rate for our residents. One of the very few sc medical schools in the country that can say that. And it's a credit to the caliber of our faculty, many of them who are here tonight, uh, and the leadership that uh, Bob Nurhood has provided during the interim and what Joe will provide as we go forward. Forensic science continues to be a pillar of excellence at Marshall University under Terry Finger's leadership. Terry's here this evening. 
uh, was introduced earlier. Uh, his wife is with him as well. Um, this is a program that continues to differentiate and continue to expand the whole field of forensic science. The most recent was the area of digital forensics. And uh, we are the only program, master's degree program, I believe in the world, if I'm correct, Terry, that has specialized accredited for accreditation for digital forensics. So we're not only the only accredited program in the United States, we're the only program in the world that has earned this accreditation. Uh, in the fall, uh, very soon, we're going to start a, a digital forensics undergraduate major. Uh, that will lead into the graduate program as well and it's a testament to Terry's leadership and the people that he's attracted to the program that not only are we the top program in DNA forensics in the country we're rapidly becoming the top program in digital forensics as well. College of Business or re earned its double ACSB accreditation this year that's a hallmark uh, accreditation for business schools and we're very pleased that that has happened. We are looking ahead as I always do, and I generally plan five-year uh, increments in my planning, and uh, we're looking ahead to what Marshall University can be as we dream big. And uh, I've said all along that I believe that we are and will become the manifestation of our expectations. And I expect great things from this university. I expect great thing from the things from the people of this university, both the alumni, the friends, the faculty, the staff, and rather than setting our sights low, we've set them very high. We are one of 21 institutions to be invited by the Higher Learning Commission to participate in a uh, project that uh, is funded by the Lumina Foundation. It's the Degree Qualifications Profile Project to test their hypotheses, their assumptions about accountability and performance in higher education. We were singled out because of the performance of this university over the last six or seven years. So we are one of the members uh, uh, of this elite club, and uh, we are working on a number of projects that uh, address, and this is under uh, uh, Dr. Gail Ormiston's leadership on the academic affairs side. Gail's here with us tonight. This is a way for Marshall University to distinguish itself in terms of what we represent and what a degree from Marshall University signifies about our graduates. This is a compelling challenge that very few institutions of higher education are willing to take on. But it goes like this. If you graduate from Marshall University, what can we say about you, whether you finished with meeting just the bare minimum requirements for graduation or you graduate in the top of the class? It's perhaps one of the most important questions we in higher education, public higher education especially, ought to be asking ourselves. We intend to answer that question in very significant and substantive ways. We have also been invited into a cohort, an alpha cohort, of four institutions across the country working with the Education Advisory Board, which is a national think tank, to participate in the Student Success Collaborative. This is a collaborative all about improving student success, improving student retention, improving student graduation rates. And what's unique about this project is the entire project is tailored to our students, our university, individually and if that's true of the other four institutions or the three institutions as well we need to ask the answer the question what do we need to do differently to ensure greater success of students who attend Marshall University many of whom are first generation many of whom come from dis, uh, economically disadvantaged backgrounds what do we need to do differently to ensure their success and to see greater success both in terms of retention and graduation of these students. The fundamental issue we're dealing with in our society today, unlike in past generations where we could import intellectual talent from abroad, we have to educate our own and we have to do a far better job of it than we've done in the past. It's no longer look to your right, look to your left on the first day of classes as a freshman, one of you won't be here come next semester. It's about how do we keep everybody together and ensure their success. This project is designed to do that. Another project that we've embarked on, and these all interdigitate, believe it or not, is the INTO project. INTO is a very special partner of ours that we are working with to improve the number and increase the number of undergraduate international students at Marshall University. We are literally committed to internationalizing the university creating more opportunities for students, especially from West Virginia, to rub elbows from students from across the world, 
to learn about different cultures, different attitudes, different religions, different points of view, and to enrich the uh, learning environment in very significant ways. We expect to enroll the first intake in fall of 2013 of about 300 international students, and we want to grow the international student population on the campus up over 2,000 students. We believe that's achievable, and we've absolutely committed to achieving that. When we look at Marshall Gifts, and uh, we look at the progress we've made, this year we expect to top $25 million in gifts and pledges for this year. That's up from $15 million last year. And we, continue, we are continuing to work very hard to improve the gift giving to the university to support the many projects and priorities that we have. It is absolutely imperative that we as a university continue to work diligently and work hard to raise the profile of the university and to uh, build the relationships that reinforce the fact that Marshall is a tremendous value and produces a tremendous product in our students. When we look at the growth of the university and where we're headed, research funding plays a vital role. And, and uh, Senator Manchin touched on the Bucks for Brains initiative, which we kind of stole from the state of uh, Kentucky, tailored it to West Virginia. But when you look at the impact that endowment-based research can have on an institution and will have on Marshall University, it's a game changer. And we're looking at a number of ways that we're going about doing this but the beneficiaries are the folks around the room that you uh, see with the, at the display areas and what these research investments mean to them and to the projects that they're moving forward on. And when you add students into the mix, these are applied learning experiences that are incredibly invigorating and vitalizing to their learning experiences, their growth and development as well. I'd like to thank all of the researchers who are here tonight from Marshall University for taking time to join us. They are experiencing tremendous success in the competitive research environment. The days of earmarks have pretty much gone away, although I still continue to push for them because I do think they have a place uh, in our world. Um, but the point is we've transitioned. We've made the transition to a more competitive grant environment. Uh, when I look at the success of the Ray Hall Transportation Institute, uh, led by Senator Plimo, uh, and uh, uh, his leadership and what that's transfer transforming into in the state. Uh, they are a nationally recognized uh, uh, transportation center uh, here in the country for the work they do, and they do outstanding work. And when you look at what we're doing, as I said, in the forensics area, when we look at what we're doing in the nanotechnology area, when we look at what we're doing in the virtual environments and the development of those and across the entire spectrum, uh, it's exciting to see the progress uh, here at Marshall. When we look at uh, what's on the near horizon, we have $100 million, in, actually $114 million in new capital projects that are on the near horizon. And uh, interestingly enough, we're leading with a new parking facility. Anybody who's a university president or had any experience as a university president knows the first thing you do is you take care of parking. And uh, that facility will be done in August. And the reason that facility was number one is because in October, we break ground on the Lewis Weisberg Family Applied Engineering Complex on Third Avenue. It's a $50 million project. Again, half of that came from a bond issue from the state. Uh, and Senator Plimel fought those wars for us in, in the legislature to get $25 million from the state. We had to raise another $25 million either from bond proceeds that the university issued or privately. We are making significant progress on blending both uh, bond proceeds as well as private gift money to build that building. That ground will break, as I said, in, in October. The Veterans Memorial Fieldhouse that many of you may remember on Fifth Avenue is no more. Uh, it was taken down. That's the site of the new uh, soccer stadium for men's and women's soccer. That facility will also be a club sports facility for lacrosse and rugby. Uh, we have a growing student population on campus that likes to play lacrosse, and so this facility will not only work well for our varsity sports, it'll be a great venue for club sports. The uh, Fine Arts Downtown Incubator, the Fine Arts Downtown Incubator facility is, is a facility that bl brings the university together with the community. Uh, in a way that uh, is unprecedented. It kind of reminds me of, of Savannah, Georgia, if you've ever been down there in the SCAD facility down there. 
Uh, this is modeled after that, and it's a tremendous opportunity for us. We have a number of athletic facilities that are on the uh, drawing boards, and all of these projects are under uh, A&E work right now. Um, indoor practice facility, uh, an academic facility for our student athletes, and a sports medicine translational research center is all part of a three building complex that we're calling the in indoor practice complex. You can see the designs of these facilities here, their illustrations. Uh, these are top tier facilities as Mike Hamrick I think can tell you on the athletic side and, and Gail on the academic side. These are game changers. These are literally transformational in terms of their impact on the university and our students and our faculty. And we're about halfway to our fundraising goal of $40 million of that $114 million. There's 70, uh, $77 million that uh, uh, we uh, have in bond proceeds. And we're well along in terms of getting these projects done. When you ask where we're going, it's, it's simple as far as I'm concerned. It's about becoming a national leader, a national leader in all things that we do. Looking at academics where we want to lead the nation in terms of, of the impact that we have on our students and the ability to uh, prove what we're doing and the proof of concept in the success of our students. Uh, I want to be a national leader in terms of what we're doing in athletics as well, uh, in research. Uh, we can't do everything, but we're focusing on things that we do well. And all of this is coming together at a time when you look at it historically. These are the worst economic conditions in this nation since the 1929, 1930, 1931 era. We have not only weathered that at Marshall, we're expanding, we're growing, we're developing. And what that takes is a very dedicated team of people, all committed to the same goals, all working together to take this university to levels that many people five years ago, I can tell you, said was impossible. It is literally about making the impossible possible, and we're all committed to doing it. We need your support, but most importantly, we need you to talk about the successes at our university to your friends, to their, your family, to your associates, about what it means to be a member of the Marshall University community. It is a powerful community that changes lives. We do make a difference. We are big enough to matter and truly small enough to continue to care. And we do that as, very, as well as, that, as anything we do. Joe talked about it when he was up here. It's about the people of West Virginia. It's about the people in our tri-state area that really matter most. We are making a difference and we will continue to do that with your support. This is a wonderful day to be here in Washington, D.C. Joe, next time, turn the temperature down a little bit, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but bottom line here, it's a great night to celebrate Marshall University. And I thank you all for joining us. And uh, please, please enjoy the rest of the evening. Uh, great friends, great camaraderie. Thanks again. Come on.